Well, 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 welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. How many episodes are we in now, Sam? I think this would be 151, but Ooh, I think I should have we... had some Bacardi. Oh, Damn. there you go. Yeah. No, but I mean, we've had so many other ones where I don't even really know how our tracking goes, if you really think about it, because we've had yeah. over 200. I mean, with the Thursday, Thirsty Thursdays and the little bonus ones. So wow. uh, I guess yeah. you're right. I didn't really think about that. Well, because because that is the case, 151. I don't have Bacardi, but I do have a drink. A tangerine white claw. I'm doing. I'm doing research for our seltzers. We got. We're making a seltzer here soon. So I'm doing research. Cheers, so buddy. is that? I was at your house. Cheers to you as well. I got a little uh, Starbucks. A little we're waiting. Uh, <laughs> is that one of those 70 calorie ones that I saw at your house? No, this is a full flavored 100 calories. You know, really, really going up crazy on it. Ooh, but, uh, rebel. Yeah, that's you what know, you are. Getting, getting crazy. Well, I think the se- the 70s have uh, less alcohol actually in them. Yeah, yeah, that's only like the the ultra and all those that they have. I mean, for the Michelob, I never understood that. I mean, obviously, I, I drink for a slightly different purpose. And while I'm not getting sloshed, I, I mean, I, I'm not always looking for the big IPAs. But also, yeah. I mean, I don't want just water, you know. Well, that's the problem there, too, is you save the calories, but then you have to have two of them to get the same buzz from the one. You might as well just, I don't know. Yeah, each their might. own, but you know, that's that's for me. But uh, yeah, we got a couple of great guests coming on here pretty soon. We should probably talk a little bit about that and not just the uh, whatever the hell we we just were talking about. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got the Heidi and uh, Carla from the Butcher Babies coming on the show. Yeah, they got a, a new album coming out, I believe, in July, and uh, <laughs> they can talk a little bit about that. And then, I mean, they're all over the place, they they got so many projects on the side. I uh, Carla, I saw, was doing some art. I follow a lot of art, punk rock kind of art stuff, and it looks like she's got some art showings and things. I would be curious to ask her about that. And then Heidi, I know, with her uh, entertainment past, with you know, she's got a movie coming out, I guess, sometime later this year. And oh, sick! I didn't even know that. I just saw, I just saw a couple of their music videos today while while we were getting ready here. Um, I wanted to ask about and. Uh, Obviously, it's a, it'll be great to have Heidi back on the show. Haven't had the chance to meet uh, Carla yet, um, so that'll be exciting. Um, yeah, that album's a double album and their first album since 2017. So And celebrating 10 years since their debut album. So Oh, look at that. There was yeah. also a, uh, you know, obviously I started following Heidi after she was on the show last year. Was that last year or two years ago now? I don't I remember. I think it was that. last year. I think that was one of the... Well, who knows? I mean, the last couple years are kind of a blend. Yeah, like we said at the beginning, it's like 151 episodes at this point. Like, fuck, man, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so whenever she was on, I started following her, and then uh, six months or so, I don't remember how long ago, I tried to find it again. There was a video that she posted that um, uh, was like a little sketch comedy that she had done like years before, or they had done like years before, uh, where they're like in a practice studio and then like these comedians come in and they're all like big, got big comedians now. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah. And like Andre from that show is on, you know, um, is in there and they get in a fight. And I was like, I, where did this freaking thing come from? And like, I have so many you. questions. I literally Googled that today because I was like, what was that from? Because I remember there was like some comedians I knew, but I, I Googled all these different ways like butcher baby's rehearsal or movie or sketch and i it wouldn't pop up so i i'm glad you brought that up because i'd love to re-ask them about that too and how that all came about yeah it was yeah really interesting stuff there oh wow carla's here already all right let's bring on carla i don't know i don't know if uh if heidi's gonna be here there's uh, early the early birds here i love it hold on a second let me get this going everybody's so much more uh punctual than we are they're so much more punctual than we are it's crazy yeah, I love it though. Like, I mean, I thought we, you and I were gonna rap for a little bit longer about Memorial Day being over at my house and watching uh, uh, Double or Nothing, but we got Carla already here. Carla, it is a Hi. pleasure to meet you. I had Heidi on here before. I'm excited to have you on here as well. We're already rolling, so you know that is Woo-hoo, a great setup. Yeah. That is a great setup. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got a pinball machine or two back there. <laughs> Four of them. Some more in the basement. They're, they're big- not mine. They're my boyfriend's, but I, I do play them. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I was going to, I was going to say, we just had a guest on the show a couple of weeks ago, the, uh, uh, Rebby Hardy that makes her own 
pinball machines. So I was like, oh, oh amazing. Another, is this another pinball enthusiast on the show? Like, but uh, yeah, no. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. I've had a little cold, so excuse my voice. I had that dreaded summer cold. It's finally 80 degrees where I live and I feel like crap. So <laughs> you're over in oh, Chicago. Good. Is that right? Are you still over yeah, there? Yeah, I'm or? in Chicago. Nice. Uh, I'm yeah. Sam, by the way. Nice to meet hey, you. Sam. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah, you guys got a lot going on here. We were just talking right before you came on. Uh, I follow a lot of art stuff and like punk rock and paintbrushes and such like that. And uh, I saw that you've been doing some shows and stuff with showing your art. Is that true? And yeah, punk rock and paintbrushes is amazing. They give voices to artists like me that don't have traditional gallery, you know, artwork. You know, I've always been a fan of comic books since I was a kid, obsessed and lowbrow art, you know, like Robert Crumb. Robert Williams. So for someone who who le- who loves art like mine, um, Punk Rock and Paintbrushes gives us a place to put that kind of stuff that maybe, although lowbrow art is getting very popular, even in, in bigger galleries, um, but definitely they've given me the ability to have these art shows. I've been putting on art shows now since 2013 and working with with uh, Punk Rock and Paintbrushes since 2016, 17. And it's been it's been awesome. Yeah, Johnny, I don't know if are you aware of punk rock and paintbrushes or no? Yeah, while you're saying it, uh, I just remembered it. Was it was it Jay Bentley or Noodles that was telling me about it? He told me right noodles. here on the show. Is probably noodles. noodles. Yeah. Oh, uh, was is noodles involved in that? And remind me, is is he involved somehow in that? Uh I think that he's either shown his art or is involved somehow. He was definitely showing art at one of the shows that I was a part of as well, or he was also DJing. I can't remember, but there's just so many musicians that are artists as well. Yeah. And it gives us a place to, to be able to show people, Hey, I'm multifaceted. I also do this. If you like it, you can check out more. And, um, you know, over the years, it's been, you know, a great side career for me, you know, bands, my size aren't, aren't breaking the bank. We're not making a million bucks. So it's, it can be hard to be out there on tour endlessly and not have an income stream coming in. So showing my art, being involved in in that community has given, again, a voice to my art. And I've been able to sell prints and, you know, apparel and have a whole, you know, side, side gig with it. That's so awesome. I'm going to bring Heidi is here now as well. So we're going to bring in your bestie. Here we go. Speaking of which, let's let's bombard her for being the late one to the show today. (laughs) Yeah, by being. I was. I was late. early. I you was early. early. She was not. She's not late. I mean, it's one minute, and and she was sitting there for a second. So. <laughs> hey, Heidi, how I've, are you? I've been you? on for twenty minutes already. Yeah, we've been running this thing for for a while. We we're, weren't sure you're going to show. You know. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my dog. Uh, I picked her up from therapy. She's uh, no, just kidding. She's. <laughs> I was like, that was a, that was a quick turnaround. Though. I like it. How are She's you, Heidi? It's been a minute. Man. <laughs> how are you i'm doing great how are you it's been a minute i was saying i was telling carla that you were on like last year a year and a half ago whatever it was and i was excited to have both of you guys together on the show here well thanks for having us i'm excited to catch up it's been a long time and you've got a lot going on it's exciting well you guys got a lot going on too that's the, we'll, we'll be getting into everything here but um speaking of like meeting and stuff are you uh still in vegas Heidi? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be out there next week. So if you want to finally meet in person, because we've only met over these things before, uh, maybe we could go hit up uh, Chris Santos's new place in Caesar's Palace. I haven't been there yet. So yeah, yeah, definitely. You. Yeah, That'd we'd love, we'd love to, love to join you. It'd be fun to meet in person. I was bummed. I uh, had to miss your guys' surprise show. Um, yeah. So I was really bummed about it, but uh, it looked really fun. Did you make it, it out fun. to Sick New World or anything? I did, actually. I did yeah. make it out to Sick New World. That was really, um, it was really like a, a family reunion or a high school reunion. I think everybody that I've ever known in my entire life was there. <laughs> so, <laughs> And even like even friends from, from Utah, from where I grew up, I saw friends from Utah there. I saw, you know, Henry saw friends that he knew in LA 20 years ago. So, um, for us, it was just every, every corner we turned, it was a shaking hands, kissing babies type of day, but we had a really, really good time. 
Yeah, it looked like a great time. I unfortunately didn't stick around for Sick New World. Uh, speaking of dogs, not to get too morbid at the beginning here, <laughs> but my my dog of 14 years uh, passed away that day, uh, the day of my first show back and everything. So the next day I had to come home to uh, console the wife and kid, you know, so I, could, I was planning on sticking around for Sick New World. It look, looked amazing, you know, but unfortunately got, you know, dad duty calls, right? Absolutely. Way more important. Yeah. yeah, definitely more important. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, Carla, I wanted to I wanted to mention to you, I've actually crossed paths with you a couple of times. Once is at Chris Santos's wedding. You were there with Charlie. Oh, yeah. I saw you guys and I saw you guys talking and I was like, I don't know. I don't want to just like walk over and introduce myself. I'm not I'm not usually that kind of guy. <laughs> you should have. Well, you know, I was I was also like I just started my my six month of six months of sobriety. And I was at a wedding. I was like really out of my element. It was like a week into it. And I was like, that was a rough one to start a week of sobriety. I don't think I've ever been as drunk as I was at that wedding. And I, I, you know, oh, I totally I, said hi to you, Carl. You don't remember? <laughs> I drink, I, you know, I drink um, a decent amount on tour. We have fun. We do shots. But um, I'm not, I, after a couple drinks, Heidi knows I'm toast. Like, so that night I was invincible. I went over to Charlie at one point and I was like this, I was like, if you need me, I'll be over here dancing with my friends. I didn't have any friends there. It was, we were, I was dancing with random women. I was on the scrambler ride. I'm surprised I didn't puke on the poor girl that I was riding it with. Don't know who she, can't remember who she was. And then they been had dancing a, they with had, my wife at one point. She was dancing on the dance floor too. I danced a little bit. Was, on, on the I was, floor. It was probably your wife that I almost <laughs> threw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had a few drinks there too. I mean, that was such a. I mean, having uh, uh, Paul Stanley do his Motown stuff uh, was so it was so wild. surreal. When your wedding singer is Paul Stanley, like you're doing something right in life. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, what a what a good time though. But like I said, good good to meet you now. I I, I met Charlie. Yeah through Mike Portnoy years ago. Oh that yeah. Was way, I, I was, I was thinking I should have said hi then too, but again, I apologize. Well, we'll, we'll remedy that next time. We're in the next same time. Room. Next time we're at the same, uh, uh, wedding. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll next make time sure we're say trash hi. at a wedding together. Just FaceTime me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be like, uh, you know, someone we know is wedding and we could all, Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> oh. ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, I, I see. Know. I see where we're going. You getting married? Me? You getting married? Me? Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Breaking news. We ever, everyone could read between the lines there. Anyways, um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys. We were just talking. Me and Sam, our uh, co-host. I have a co-host now, Heidi. Um, yeah, so. Sam. What's up? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> now, he was always uh, producing stuff before and, and helping out with the show and uh, uh, this season we decided to make it more conversational even more lax than it was prior to like have like more flow around of a round table kind of conversation so I was talking with Sam and I couldn't find it on your Instagram again Heidi I, I started following you after you were on the show and uh, several months ago I don't remember when it was you posted this old video of like some kind of sketch you guys did back in the day where you yeah. fought, you fought these other comedians uh, for like a band's rehearsal space. And yeah. a lot of these comedians I'm seeing, I'm like, these guys are big, like massive yeah. comedians. Like, I'm like, how did this come about? I, and I couldn't find it again. So I apologize. I, d I oh, just saw I, it on I, the one time. It's um, it was a, a short sketch that Eric Andre and Eric Bel Belfort, I think is how you say his last name. They made that. That was all them. It's called My Slutty Girlfriend. And it was just a, I think it was a YouTube thing or ended up on Vimeo. Um, but there's a whole entire series with that. And they have a band called My Slutty Girlfriend. And they, they hired us in our old band to go in there and um, take over and then, of course, beat their asses, which is normal when yeah, we get their band. Um, <laughs> but well, I did. I, I mean, it was it was long enough. It was long enough ago that you guys were wearing the tape all over your breast and stuff. So it was <laughs> I knew it was a yeah. while. When, when was that? Gosh, 2008, 2008, nine. Oh, wow. I think it was 2008 because we started Butcher Babies in 2009. Yeah. 
and this was the band prior to Butcher Babies. So what did you guys um, call that? Switchblade Kitty. And we were, there were, uh, in that video, there were four, but there, usually there were five of us and we did rock metal punk covers. And it was really crazy. It was, I went, I was new to Los Angeles and I'd only been there for a year when we started Switchblade Kitty. And all of a sudden I'm playing every venue up and down the Sunset Strip. And um, we, like I said, five girls and four dudes playing in the Viper Room. You can imagine how crazy that was on that tiny stage. And uh, we had residencies there. We had residencies at the Roxy. We competed up against uh, Steel Panther sometimes. And it was really fun. In Ooh, fact, you don't want to compete against Steel Panther in 2008. That, that, well, that we, was... did, we, we were right next door because they were at the Key Club and yeah. we were at the Roxy. And so after our show one night, I went over to the Key Club and I stormed their stage. I had a pink mohawk and... <laughs> And I stormed their stage in my nipple tape and everything. And I went up there and I like, tried to fight Michael Starr. But we're all, you know, we're we're close with them. And it was just, it was a fun time. And it was it was wild and um, and exciting. And that's how I met Carla. So yeah, it, you know, to us, it's it's definitely one of our um, most cherished memories. And it, it was it was a really unique way for us to meet on MySpace. <laughs> on MySpace, oh, really? you guys met, or I'm sorry, or you are you saying you met at the Key Club for middle school? Well, we met at MySpace on MySpace. I answered an ad for I had so I had moved to LA in 1998 to play music, mm -hmm. and of course, a lot of other things. It was hard to find a band. Years and years go by. Um, I did a lot of acting and modeling and all this stuff, and I was you know searching for something to you know band. Couldn't find it, so I quit music altogether. And I went to mortuary school. So I was a mortician and that's what I was going to do. I wasn't going to be any part of anything, you know, entertainment related ever again. And then I saw this ad on MySpace for this band, you know, this band that Heidi was already in that had residents of the Viper Room. And, you know, it was five girls with tape on their boobs. And I was like, this looks <laughs> so cool. I want to be a part of this. And they were looking for another girl. So I sent a message and then I got an audition. And the boyfriend that I had at the time was so mad that I was going to, he said, you told me you were quitting entertainment. You weren't going to play music anymore. If you do this, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> so I said, okay, I won't. And then I went anyways, got the gig, met Heidi. And, you know, my whole life changed in that moment. It's just crazy how you work so hard for years and years to put together a band and then something so crazy happens that you never expected once you've pretty much given up on it. You know, this magic moment comes along. Like it was, it was literally fate that put us together. I, I will say that till the day I die. That's Absolutely. amazing. I, I want to get back to that mortuary school though. Where the hell did you go to mortuary school? I didn't know there was a school for this. What did oh, you learn in that? County Cypress College in Orange County has a bachelor's program for mortuary science. So um, there's programs scattered all over the country. Um, but it, if you're a California resident, you can go there. And it was incredible. Um, you have embalming labs. It's, everything is very hands-on. You learn um, everything from mortuary accounting to mortuary law to embalming, funeral directing, restorative art. So um, after I had you know struggled so long in the entertainment industry, going full throttle into a program that was so time consuming and so hard, you know, anatomy, physiology, chemistry, all these things, it really centered me and um, changed my life. And I, I enjoyed doing it. I had always been fascinated with death as a kid. So I took that wow. fascination and I made it into, you know, a career. That's incredible. Like, first of all, that was that's right in our back door, Sam. Like, she just said, yeah. Orange County. My wife's right around the corner. Cyprus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're in Huntington, Orange, uh, Orange County. And uh, the other thing, though, so th you would actually be the person to ask about this. I was wondering if I would ever be able to get the chance to embalm myself or whatever and put it myself in a glass case when I die like this and give it to my family <laughs> to... Oh. Funny you is that, say that. Is that this. something we can do? Is that is that something that is that illegal? Is that legal? My you said you know the legal side too. Yeah, my dream is to be buried in a glass coffin. Since I was a kid, I've always wanted a glass coffin on display awesome. at a party. Did you see that That's on Disney? 
<laughs> yeah, it was Snow of, White. She she yeah. wants to be Snow White. <laughs> I thought that, yeah, I was the shit. We're sleeping you know, beauty. All dressed up, you? looking good in my my last outfit, my motorcycle boots, and, and in my glass coffin. I mean, you're, it's not practical. Well, actually, you could put the glass coffin inside of the you know the the outer coffin. So yeah, you could do that, but you can't embalm yourself. That that'd be a little weird. I well, well, I mean, I'd have to. So I'd have to find someone that right? for you. Yeah, exactly. I can, embalm, I can embalm you, and and we would have to like put you in that position first, and then yeah, we embalm. Yeah, my thumbs up for those listening, not watching on YouTube right now. I was thinking something along the lines of like a the Buddy Christ from uh, from Dogma. Yep. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> well, you know what? Ash from New Year's Day. Oh, there you go. <laughs> even... Ash from New Year's Day's uh, boyfriend makes caskets, so maybe you could uh, hit him up. Custom casket and. Yeah. Thumbs up. Have you ever talked to Jonathan Davis about embalming and stuff? Because I know that that was always the thing. No, that everyone talked I, about I, ha- um, I believe I don't think he embalmed. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I don't know the whole story. I've never I've never met him. Um, but I or maybe he was trying to work at the coroner's office or did work at the coroner's office. I'm not sure. I have to like look it up and see. Um, it's funny. I always people always ask, did you are you did you do that because it's heavy metal to do that? And it's not at all. Like that is not the reason that I went into mortuary science. I have a, it's like a deep fascination with the whole dying process. I'm mm-hmm. a certified thanatologist. Um, and that's someone who studies, you know, death, dying and the body processes. I'm also a grief counselor now. So I've always just been fascinated with that part of life. And perhaps it's because I was raised by, um, you know, my grandparents and I was always fascinated with aging as well as, as dying, you know, and, what happens mm. to our bodies. So it has the the fact that I'm in a metal band or there's other metal musicians who have done this career it had nothing to do with me loving it or wanting to go into it at all. So at the end of so at the end of our lives, what happens then? You've done all the study and what 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 happens? That's- it, that's the magic of, of life. Nobody really knows. Right. Um, I, I don't um, believe there is an afterlife. They you know, like I've, I've always been an, an atheist since I was a kid, since I was when I was very young, I made that decision for myself. Mm-hmm. I was raised in a Catholic family. And um, during, you know, during um, catechism and everything, I just was, no, nah, this is not for me, my personal choice. But being a, a funeral director, I respect everybody's beliefs. No one is wrong or right. If what, what you believe is what you believe. Um, I believe that, you know, energy does go somewhere after you die, but I don't think it's a traditional, you know, afterlife where we're all hanging out together. But I do think the energy of people that you love that have passed is around you and you can feel it. Um, and, uh, comes to you when you need it. But again, I don't believe in traditional afterlife. Right. I don't, th- I, I definitely don't either. I don't know. I don't know how Sam, have we ever talked about that? Just you and me. I mean, I'm the balcony talks, John, Johnny's got a balcony right off his home bar right there. And, uh, the late night talks always happen there. And I'm sure that we've probably it had to plenty of these. Up. It had to have come up. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 um, I like to shout out this book any chance I get, uh, it's called until the end of time by, uh, Brian green. And, uh, man, you listen to that thing. It, it's very scientific and, uh, how it comes to, uh, what he believes is, happens at the end of our time and everything and what happens at the very end of time itself. So, uh, it's very interesting. Puts a I real perspective it. on shit. Yeah. You have to, uh, write me the, the name of it. Um, I will. After, off. Yeah. I'll get your number from Heidi. Heidi, yeah. Who, yeah. who's that that's dog something. behind you? Oh, that's my princess. She runs this household. Her name is Toki Wartooth. <laughs> yes, Toki named Wartooth. after Metalocalypse. <laughs> and, um, yeah, she's she's our mascot. She goes on tour with us. She's uh, she's she's our little lady. And um, this is her couch, her house. We just live in it. And um, yeah, but she's here. <laughs> no, but I would love. Uh, that's something that I would love to listen to as well or read as well because um, to me. I also shared the same views as Carla and yourself <laughs> about mm. this. And it came after, you know, years and years of researching different religions. And, um, I, and Henry and I, we will smoke a little weed and, <laughs> and talk about this stuff all the time. Yeah. So that's something I definitely want to look into as well. 
That's what, that's so funny. You mentioned the, even the weed part too. This is something that's kind of recent in my life. I think we all have thought about it our whole lives, you know, kind of, um, and come to our own conclusions. I mean that for everybody that's on this planet. Um, but just like going through, uh, almost a midlife crisis or existential crisis that I went through over, over being home for the last five years. Um, yeah. really it, it, those kind of thoughts, like at first were just, I couldn't think about anything else but it. I kind of had an obsession about it for a while. And then, um, you know, <laughs> through this book and, 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 and other, other friends of mine that I've been talking to and stuff and therapy, I came to my own conclusions on stuff and it's really pretty much what this guy says in the book. So you'll, you'll find out. Uh, but yeah, it's, and then the, the weed thing, like, like I started smoking weed again. I hadn't started smoking weed until since I was like 20 years old, I took like a 15 year hiatus off of it. And I started again yeah. and I found if you do it right, it's, it's like very retrospective, introspective drug it, or it can be, at least it is for me. Like end of the night, I'll, I'll, I'll take a couple of hits and just like think about how the day went and how I could do the next day better, you know? And it like makes me really think about it. And it's, it's kind of, it's kind of been therapeutic. I don't know if you use it for that too. Absolutely. I mean, I never did. I didn't actually smoke weed or partake in THC in any capacity um, until probably the summer of 2021 maybe 2020. And, uh, and it was just something that I was never really interested in. I was, I was a drinker and, uh, I started it and I'm, what I found is I'm just so much more creative with it. Mm -hmm. In fact, this new music video that we're, we're in the process of filming right now. I remember one night I was here and I had my pen and I got so creative and I just, typed out a treatment for the video and I, I was just so excited about it and I'm following that treatment to this day for this video and so it's it's really um something that I use as a creative tool but also to relax and I have also as, you know as you have said um taken a step back from the alcohol as well in fact these this summer tour that we're going to be doing here in the u.s i will be doing that as a dry run for myself boo! Boo! <laughs> no, that's a good friend right there that is a great friend booing you for the for that. that's, <laughs> that's okay. beautiful that's beautiful because i love that for me um i feel like you know the marijuana or cannabis is you know it, I worked in that industry for a really long time. I worked I remember, yeah. at um, different weed shops in Los Angeles uh, over seven years off and on uh, for the same company. And I really grew a love for the science behind it. And I also was able to meet so many people that would come in. We call them patients, patients that would come in and give, get different strains that helped them, them with different ailments. Mm -hmm. And so as I learned more and more and more about it, and I was able to really know what different strains would do for different people, I decided to kind of just give it a whirl myself. And I found that A, it's healthier for me, and B, I'm I'm the same happy Heidi as when I'm drunk, so <laughs> I can do I can do that. And and um, I also went through a period of I would say probably about eleven years where I drank every single day. Mm -hmm. It's not out of my norm to have right. a bottle or two of wine at night. And yeah. I just realized, you know, I'm 38 years old, and I'm I'm just. I need to slow that shit down. And also, you know, with the things that come with it, the, the hangovers, the weight gain, all those different things. Um, and I have found that not trading a vice for another vice, because sometimes I, I mean, most nights now I just go to bed completely sober, which is just so rare for me. <laughs> but um, over the last couple of years, I think using um, cannabis as like a, um, something to help me wean off of the alcohol was a really nice thing. Yeah. That's kind of where it went to. It's a good thing for, for Heidi. I cannot smoke weed. I've tried many times and I just, uh, I fall asleep. I don't like it yet, but I think it works great for her. Yeah. I think that's the key too. Uh, you yeah. know, it's not, a, it's not for everybody. Not, not, nothing, 
nothing in this life is for everybody. You know what I mean? You got to find what, what works for you on every, on all those levels. On that well, note, though, you guys both have drinks. You guys both have drinks in your hands. What are you drinking on? Coffee. Sam's got I coffee have, too. So usually I would never drink during the day unless I'm on vacation or something. But I, since it's drinks with Johnny, I've got a little Pinot Yay. Grigio out. I like that it's in the scotch glass, though. The Pinot Grigio. Is it? Is well, in the scotch. I didn't, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't have very many fancy wine glasses and you're going <laughs> to laugh, but it's also box wine because as Heidi knows, I cannot open a bottle of wine. Wait, it's a whoa, big, whoa, whoa. big problem for me. <laughs> <Cal I>, proof. <laughs> you need I, How long have you been food. drinking for? How long have you been so, drinking for? How oh, long has your career drew? I, you know what? Okay. This is for me. I used to only drink whiskey an old fashioned or crown mm. Royal on the rocks. That was it. Um, and then um, Heidi and I started drinking wine together. Charlie loves wine. So we got even deeper into it. And so now all I drink is wine, but I hate opening the bottles. I hate it. If we're on tour and there's a bottle, I'm like, Heidi, can you open this bottle for me at home? Charlie opens my bottles. Um, and so when he's gone, he's on tour right now. And I, I just went to the supermarket and got myself some box wine like a like an apple <laughs> it's so funny if you ever need this to amazing. stump carla just get a bottle of, of wine with a cork <laughs> there's you there's know what like, it's squid game <laughs> or and carla has to open up a bottle <laughs> but it's like the, the first couple times i tried it the cork was like everywhere in the bottle it was I mean, I might as well have been laying on the floor with wine all over me and the cork over here. It's just, it's, I don't know what my problem is with it, but I don't like it. Don't want to do it. Just, you know that, I, that's you know all that they I have, have bottles now, a lot of bottles. I'd say like it's almost 50, 50, maybe even more that are twist off now. Yeah. They've gotten rid of, yeah. they've gotten rid of the corks for you. I think oh. you were the reason they felt so bad for Carla <laughs> that they got rid of the corks. It's a whole new industry just for me. <laughs> In your writer, it says all the bottles. The, the lazy wine connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> Is backstage changed at all? I mean, you're smoking weed. We, we were talking about, uh, about John's backstage. is a little different as you get older. I heard you guys on another po podcast talk about the party days and how you guys still party, but it's a little different. Uh, have things changed backstage as, as age hits in? And, you know, I was thinking, you know, all we really heard about when we were younger, because they didn't have social media and stuff about, you know, just people going hard or going completely sober but you don't hear about oh, i just got fucking old and it's not coming off like i used to I need to watch what i'm drinking or whatever does that stuff uh play into it or when you guys are on the road you just we go down? hard in our day. we have the funnest after bus parties whether we're drinking or, or not we don't even need to be drinking to do this we put on our um like 90s r&b hip-hop mix and okay. we dance stop. all around the bus. Stop, for Carla, don't go there. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm not telling all the secrets, but well, I'll tell you this. This is how fucking wild our after parties get. We, we were in Europe last year for like six weeks, and we had a new sound guy. It was his first day. He came in to the tour midway. And we're like, have some Jaeger shots with us and come to our dance party on the bus. Well, I woke up in the morning and this poor sound guy had no teeth in his mouth. What? He had gotten so drunk. We partied so hard that he fell out of the bus. Not, and not while I was moving. Teeth. We were at a gas station or petrol. <laughs> yeah, not while I was moving. But that, so that's, that's a little insight into our bus parties, but it's not usually that. Wait, crazy. are you not supposed to party on the bus while it's moving? <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't no, know that. No, he didn't fall out of it. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> So wait, wait, he busted his teeth out at the thing? Oh, yeah. He must have died. He must have fallen hard. Oh, my That's God. That's not easy to do. Well, so, good on you. as it turns out, so he wakes up and he's missing teeth. And, you know, we he's French and barely speaks any English. And we're just kind of like, I feel so bad. We instigated this party. We were sharing a bus with a band that we didn't really know. We'd been out for a couple of weeks. And we had a day off the next day. And we just thought, you know what? It is time for a rager let's show let's show these germans how we do so <laughs> yeah so you know we turned on our mix and we have this special little thing called the double twerk and it became the triple twerk and then it became the quadruple twerk there's video of it somewhere there's evidence somewhere but no one will ever see this it's just for us and it was it's just so much fun and for us i think 
that opens up the door to be like, Hey, you know, like let's be friends. And, um, so it's, it's this guy's first day here. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is awesome. There, there's booty shaking. There's <laughs> the bus is rocking, you know? And, uh, and so he's just drinking, drinking, drinking. And then the next morning, you know, he's missing a tooth. And we hear he fell out of the bus and lost a tooth. We thought, oh my God, it broke out of his mouth. There was probably blood everywhere. It turns out it was a fake tooth and the thing had just popped out and he was, <laughs> he was searching on the ground, my tooth, my tooth. And our tour manager who's sober was like picking him up and like, we'll get you a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth are expensive, so he did. It, it was very expensive for him to get his new front front chompers back. That's but after the amazing. tour, he, so he went the whole tour without his front middle tooth right there. And after the tour, he sent us a picture. He's like, "New teeth." So he he was a total jab. But that's kind of a rare thing for us. We are um, when it comes to like our backstage, we're very very tame. Um, mm for the most part we're we're pretty tame until you turn on um like Paul Coffin or some old country and <laughs> then we turn up <laughs> or our, um, our favorite jam I got to yeah. get to well, some of these parties I'm jealous of the sound guy by the way because not not because he lost his tooth but I mean I imagine what I, I already know what a what a four-way twerk is or whatever you were saying you were calling it and a bunch of drinking a bunch of, like two Two beautiful women come up to you and go, come have Jaeger on our bus and party. Like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure most guys are going to say yes, you know, so <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely want to want to party with you guys at some point like that, because that sounds like a lot of fun. You guys are into the night. Yeah, I just want to do the U.S. tour. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not excited. You'll make an exception. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so much fun because our boys are so supportive and it, our boys are just like, oh, Okay, here's here's something I learned about Carla. Um, I, I we've been best friends for almost two decades, and last fall I learned something about my best friend that I never knew before. Don't tell, don't tell the world. Yes, oh, Carla knows all the lyrics to Fall Out Boy. Sugar, we're going down. That I is don't. The song. All of them, even the ones that are that are intelligible. Like I that, like, there's some of I've never. I've never known what what he's saying in, in all of them. No no disrespect. I didn't it's a great song. But... She knew him. She's the song, singing lyrics. Really, why that song makes me so happy is that formulated to do that. It like does something to your brain. <laughs> so but what is the what is the lyric? I, I, it, I'm sure it's been answered before, but I didn't. I'm not researching what the lyric is. Is it is it uh, what is it? A loaded god complex, cock it and pull it. Is that what he says? Yeah. Go to God complex, cock it and pull it. I think so we're I gonna need some it. more, so you got to keep going. Yeah, just keep yeah. singing it. Oh yeah, keep no. going, Carla. What are the rest <laughs> of the lyrics? I can't sing today, <laughs> <laughs> but no, anywhere. So now, anywhere we're at in the world, and that song comes on, I'm like, stop, and it's a, it's a party. You, you, you ever do a, uh, karaoke in Helsinki? No, is it good in Helsinki? Oh, karaoke in Helsinki is amazing. Next well, time so you we guys are out there, it's earlier. amazing. They have so bars I, like that are open because I mean, it never gets dark in the summertime there. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what I was telling Heidi the other day, because I've been to Helsinki with Charlie, but I haven't been with my band yet. So we're going for the first time. Oh, and I, yes. the first thing I said to her was, I'm so excited for you to see Helsinki. It's just rock and roll everywhere. And it's so much fun. So after we, we uh, play our festival, we have to get down and um, go find ourselves some Helsinki... Uh, karaoke then is this going to be part of the dry uh run though heidi no no so good the don't do helsinki dry <laughs> you they have saunas they have bat they have saunas and ev they have just as many bars as saunas so everyone just gets hammered all night doing the karaoke thing and then goes and sweats it all out at these at these saunas where they also have more beer, beer for you afterward to calm your nerves so that's perfect because it's the last day of that run so we have like a two and a half week run in Europe. And I decided that it's going to be the U S run. It's going to be focused on like fitness in the parking lot every day and no drinking. And, you know, it, it's just something, a goal I set for myself, but when it comes to Europe, no, all, <laughs> all bets are off. I love so it. Helsinki is on. And since it is the last day of the run, 
I don't have to worry about losing my voice. Like there's certain alcohols I can't drink because I'll lose my voice. So, I mean, that just give me one of those suicide drinks. Just put, give me the bar mat. <laughs> yeah. You guys got to get out to the, to the karaoke. You're going to have a blast. We do it every yeah. time I'm there. Every time, like the whole band, we all, we all go <laughs> and do karaoke to like we mornings or we times in the morning, you know, it's, it's, it's such a blast, but uh, you guys mentioned a couple of times now, these runs that you got coming up. Uh, we know you got this uh, double album coming out uh, in July, right? That's, and it's the first one since uh, 2017. Yeah. That's almost as yeah. long as us, guys. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Ours went we seven years. Your guys' you. went six. Were you competing? I that's what we were just like, we're like, okay, as soon as as soon as Avenge drops theirs, I, I think we can <laughs> we can follow it up. <laughs> um you know, actually in t- our album came out in 2017 and we were, you know, out on tour for almost two years on it. And when we got back from tour, it was the end of 2018. We literally were back a couple of days before Christmas. And so we were tired yeah. <laughs> and we were going to take all of 2019 off to write and record, which we did. We took, we only played two shows in 2019, two festivals, fly dates, And uh, we went to Phoenix, Arizona and wrote with Matt Good and recorded a bunch of songs that we love. We just, we love those songs. And we had a plan to release everything in 2020, which would have only been a three year difference, right? So, um, and of course the world shut down and we we saw uh, some of our friends releasing music and it was just kind of, um, it was almost like, it, it was just not the time. We just recognized that it just mm-hmm. wasn't the time to release this. It was music. going to feel a little forceful for you at that point. I would, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it that, just you know. felt like, um, you know, it wasn't important and yeah. it felt like it was premature. You know, there wasn't, there weren't dates around it or anything. It just didn't feel right. And so we backed off and decided to release some of the songs as singles and mm-hmm. which we've done over the last <laughs> Three years because during that time we thought hey let's write more and more and more that's where the double album comes to, into play so we did zoom just like this zoom writings with um wow. uh, t- with each other because carla is in illinois and i'm in nevada so mm-hmm. you, and there was no traveling at that time so we just we sat like this and wrote together and wrote with um amazing writers. One writer that we loved is Blair Daly. Uh, we have a song coming out with, uh, with him, um, on June 9th. And we're just, it, so we had all this extra material and we went to the studio early 2022 and laid it all down. And so we're just excited to finally get it out there. And it has been a long time, but it also feels like it hasn't because we did lose almost three years. Right, right. And I, I, I could, I could uh, empathize with that too. Like it does, didn't feel like five years away from the road. Didn't feel like seven years away from our last record. It just, but you look at it, you go, oh shit. I guess it has yeah. been that long. But um, you guys are all working on it too. So behind the scenes, to everybody. I mean, everyone else thinks that you guys are just, you know, not working, but you guys are working on this the whole time. And you guys, yeah. I, I heard you guys are doing this all independently this time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been yeah. amazing. Now, independently to be honest with you i mean we loved being with century media but i think you know having complete control over everything we do is just awesome mm-hmm. and it's a really great option for people that people don't really understand yet i think i think in the years to come more bands are going to start doing it this way i can imagine so cuz it seems like with, with everything like Labels have kind of just become banks at this point for a lot of them, you know, it's, and it's like, if you've done it for long enough, like you guys have been doing it for a couple of decades now, you, you, you kind of know what you need to do and, and, and you, you could put a team around to help you out and you can, you don't need a bank to help you out like anymore. I mean, getting, getting distribution isn't the same. It's, you know, it's all digital, you know, sans a few uh, vinyl records or CDs that you might still put out, but that's a smaller, smaller unit than it's ever been. 
and it's only getting yeah. smaller by the day. Uh, so, you know, it's, with everything being digital, it's like, what do I need a label for? I could distro, I could distro it like I distro my podcast right here, you know, like it doesn't need to be anything crazy. Yeah. And I, I think that was really scary for us because we did leave our label in 2018. In the middle of our touring schedule, we were home for like two weeks and we sat down with the president of the label at the time. And um, this, the it had just sold to Sony Records and it just felt like we weren't really working at all with the people that we signed with. And, and yeah. people at Sony, it was like trying to trying to convince them like, you know, like this is or not really convinced, explain what we do. And um, it, it just it, it just didn't feel like a family anymore. And we right. sat down with um, the president and we just said, hey, like, can we please just not please just don't pick up this option they were trying to throw money at us and stuff and we it was scary it was so scary it was a really hard decision all we we it, we went back and forth on it a lot of mm -hmm. whether or not to do this independently because in in 2018 it, it wasn't as easy as it is right now um yeah. and maybe it was but but we just didn't know and we, we were already pretty much funding all of our stuff anyways. We were funding right. our own music videos and producing them. And we've been doing that since the beginning of our career. And when it came down to it, we sat with our lawyer and just put out numbers and we realized this is something that we can really just do on our own and own these masters and own what we do and so be important. able to have the creative freedom. Freedom. And I'm so grateful that in 2018, we made that really difficult decision as, as friends, you know, mm -hmm. we were business partners, but as friends, we made this really, really difficult decision. It could have ruined our career. Um, I think right now we're recognizing that it was a huge plus, but for a couple of years there, it was kind of like, did we ruin <clears throat> everything by leaving? It was, it was really scary. And I, I am very grateful that we had, you know, our lawyer in our corner saying, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And then to each other, you can do this, you can do this. And the fans have been so incredible. And it's not like it was like at the beginning when people said, you're only credible if you are on a label. And it's yeah. not that way anymore. And I'm just so grateful that we've had, you know, the support system that we have in building this independent group. And it's, it's been really fun and successful in doing these music videos and having all the creative freedom. It's literally, it's, it's, it's a release for us again. So and I feel like that release kind of was taken away for a while. Oh, yeah. So good to hear. And I do think it's the right decision for this, for this day and age, for sure. Like, I mean, I, uh, kudos to you guys for recognizing it in 2018. Honestly, that, that's really cool. Good for you guys. Thanks. It was scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the right move. It's the right move. Uh, especially for like you, like we said, a band like yours, you're already funding your own music videos. You've been doing this for a minute. You know what you're doing. You know, maybe a label still has a place for bands that are just starting out. I don't know. I, yes. I would probably advise against that because of those 360 deals, but I don't know. You never know. Um, each their own. But speaking of funding music videos, you said earlier that you were in the middle of making a, a, a music video and you got this new song coming out June 9th. Is that is that when everything's happening there? Well, June 9th is just the release of another song that's on the, the second part of the double album. And it's totally different than anything on the album. It's totally different than almost anything that you've ever heard from us. It's a very vulnerable song. and um, when it comes to the, the creation of our music videos, it's kind of just, we, we've always kind of done it ourselves. And so now we're really doing it all ourselves. I grew up in television and film. My dad has a production company. And so we have gone to Utah to their studios and filmed, or we get help here in Vegas. Even in 2017, my family came out to Los Angeles to help us with a Lil our Lilith music video. So it's always kind of been in-house and in family. And we've really kind of taken it to a new level. Um, for our single Red Thunder that just came out, yeah. we we got everyone in Vegas for one day <laughs> and uh, we were even kind of separate. Like uh, Ricky could only come in this day. Carla could only come in this day. She was in LA and I'm like, Hey, this is a 
hop, skip and a jump away. Can you come over yeah. here and we'll just film this real fast. And I filmed it all and then edited it all and did all that. And it, it came out really fun and really exciting. And I got to really dive back into those roots. And so, yeah, we are in the middle of it. I'm well, I, nonetheless, you know, what's that? I said on a good old iPhone, nonetheless, like yeah. iPhones. Are you guys so, filmed that you guys filmed red thunder on, on the iPhone. Yeah. Awesome. So, Here's here's where this iPhone thing came into play. So my brother has all sorts of huge cameras. He travels all over the world for film. He has this this camera that most people would use on a music video. It's like a fifty thousand dollar camera, and it's gorgeous. Well, when we were filming our music video for Beaver Cage, we used a camera just like that, and we missed a couple of shots and we needed to do some pickup shots. So I call my brother and I'm like, Hey, can I get you out to Detroit? We're on tour right now. I just need some scenes in the bus. You know, I don't talk yeah. to my brother like that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gangster. I'm glad that you had to clarify okay. that. That was awesome. <laughs> Cause everyone's picturing, uh, but, everyone's picturing you with the sideways cap on. Yeah. Going, Yo, you gotta yeah, get out I'm to Detroit. Here. <laughs> get you out to destroy. But um he's he he was actually out of the country at the time and he said, you know, if you have an iPhone 13, this is when iPhone 13 uh, for, before the 14 came out. He's like, if you have an iPhone 13 Pro, um, you can it, it's pretty much does all the exact same thing that this camera does. And so we literally filmed that pickup scene on a phone in in our bus. And we sandwiched it in the actual music video shot on the really nice camera. And you can't tell the difference. Oh, no, you can't so, tell at all. I was just watching this music video you're talking about for Beaver Cage uh, a little bit before you guys came on. Because I wanted to I wanted to see what, what you'd been up to since the last time I talked to you, of course. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, these 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 are different music videos than we're up the last time I talked to you. And uh, Beaver Cage was like a lot of fun to uh, to film, by the way. I just want to say that looks like a really fun music video to, to do with looked like a lot of friends of yours and everything like that and but i i was curious though because i was trying to l listen to the lyrics if i could figure it out what is a beaver cage <laughs> oh I, I guess the running joke is we call uh our bus the beaver cage now i don't know <laughs> um <laughs> it's silly well because you I mean, obviously i'm thinking like beaver like you know the, the elephant in the room and, and cage and i guess i guess yeah. i get it i guess i get it that was no word title of the song and we just loved it so much because it's so random and out there that and, and the lyrics are kind of out there so we figured just keep it keep it beaver cage i love that it's it's, it's raunchy it's fun i like it i'm in you know the, but where the actual name came from is way different than the song or video um the name was uh, there was a battle in vietnam named after it named that called beaver cage and um so was red thunder so the two those two songs we kept those same working titles as the actual titles of of the track so a, a lot of our working titles were vietnam battles we, we do that uh, every every album we have a different theme of working and that titles. The, and this and this one was vietnam huh? yeah it was it, it was just the battles from vietnam throughout our about? entire writing scenario there um there, there were all sorts of interesting names, and I, we leave that to Henry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Henry's the one who comes up with the themes. I think on our our third album, it was our stores. Like we had Subway, Rite Aid, Ross. What was and the car one? Was that number? Was that was that um, Take It Like a Man? The cars? Oh no, cars were the third one. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's just like we had like Cuda, Mustang, like all sorts of different ones, but. Um, so that, that one, it just kind of stuck. We just thought the word, the term beaver cage was just so wild that it made sense for this song that didn't make sense. <laughs> oh, uh, it made sense to me after, uh, after a second, I was like, all right, I, th I think this is what they're going. And I didn't know anything about Vietnam. So I was like, yeah, all right. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> that you guys use those working titles. Another thing I saw though, real quick, uh, and then I'll let Sam get in here because I feel like I haven't let you do anything today here. I got I got too excited. Easy so. lifting for me. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, the Slam and Grams. Oh, oh yeah. That you were doing. So <laughs> I'm watching this and you film it like like an old infomercial or something like that. And I was just like busting up and I was 
It was really funny. How is that? Go- Are you still doing those? Yeah. It's our clap back to cameo. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> um, you know, uh, to us, Henry and I just like to do things different than other people, I guess. But, um, you know, that we so many times people love to have, you know, their favorite musicians make a cameo or, you know, a shout out video for their loved one. And so we thought it'd be just kind of fun to really make it more personable where we create a 30 second original song for each one and Mm. it is it is so fun for us we keep up our chops it's all you know i I, he produces everything in our studio and and he's also hilarious so he came up with the idea for the infomercial and it the one that i think you're talking about is the one off of it's it's loosely, well, pretty much almost exactly. It's based on a commercial for Ghostbusters. <laughs> so, ah, oh, that's nice. okay. Okay. Which I love, so that's by I, the way. I didn't catch yeah. that. But the one thing, so, that's, it just reminded me what I really wanted to ask, though. Because at the end of the video, someone lets one rip. Was that you, Heidi, or was that Henry? <laughs> We're going to blame it on Toki. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching this all of a sudden, like they're standing there, like super awkward face, Sam. I don't know if you saw it. And, all, and like right before it ends, someone rips a fart. And I was like, I got to know who that was. Was that, was that Heidi or Henry? Sound of the fart, I could tell you if it was Heidi or Henry, probably. Well, that's well, close watch the video. You guys are close. And, you, know, you guys are real close. <laughs> our boats here. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I've been asked to uh, plead the fifth on this one. So if that gives any indication. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess I, I guess I get it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll report back my findings. Yes, please do. <laughs> I'm gonna need to know. The inquiring minds need to know. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, that was, you that got, was a special Easter egg. So I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it, it had me laugh. It gave me. A, gave me a good chuckle. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> so you got the tour. You got the album coming out. You got the tour coming up. What What's the tour dates again? Um, we leave on June 3rd. Well, Carla leaves on June 7th, but the rest of us leave on June 13th. Um, and then we're gone, we're gone till September and then home for a month and a half and then gone again till December, mid December. Okay. So, got a, we've got a lot going on, which is exciting and fun. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to get back to work. You know, last year we spent the last half of the year kind of doing the exact same thing. European festival run, festival run, um, a U.S. tour, then back to Europe. And that's kind of exactly what we're doing this year. And I'm I'm super grateful to be going to Europe twice, two years in a row, because a couple, you know, beforehand it was really like every two years and at one point there was a four year break of not going to Europe. And so we're super excited to really lay down some dirt, um, you know, for our European fan base. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to look at some of these dates in the, in the States then. Cause we got, we got our dates coming up. We, we leave mid July through almost September as well. So if there's any luck, we might be crossing paths, and I might actually get to go on the beaver cage. That yeah. would be a lot of fun. <laughs> I have a question about that. You, you, I saw in, in the States, you guys are traveling with a great lineup, Mudvayne, Cold Chamber, Guar, Nonpoint, which, you, I mean, all of you guys are such entertaining shows to watch, so that'll be a good lineup. But it also, I saw that there's a bus bingo VIP thing. What is that? Yeah. We do. We are... We, our VIP parties, we don't really like to do anything normal. Um, you know, the, the shaken hands, thanks for being here. Sorry, my light died. You know, that type of thing is really, is fun, but for us, we really like to kind of make it exclusive. So sometimes we'll do a pre-show meet and greet, which is the normal, like take some pictures, spin a wheel, win some stuff. You know, we love to play games, everything. We, we want to make everything gamified. It's just, it's just more fun for us and more fun for our fan base. And so a couple in 2017, we, we started these bus parties. So after all the bands are done playing, we escort them to the 
beaver cage now. <laughs> and um, it's just a little, a little after party on the bus and it's more exclusive. There aren't very many spots available because, you know, it's small. Um, and it's, it's fun for us to be able to show people our rolling home. We spend so much time there and a lot of people, it's their first time ever stepping on a tour bus and right. it's their first time even looking at like, what goes on in here. And it's, it's really boring. Um, as we all, you know, on a, a bus. <laughs> Wait a minute, boring. you're not selling this VIP package very well. <laughs> the bus thing is boring. The VIP is fun. So we play. <laughs> well, if, if, if you give up, if you give them the quadruple twerk and some, and some Jägermeister, it would definitely be a bigger part of the of the of the VIP no package. No twerking. You come in, <laughs> you play some bingo, and you leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the yeah, treatment I, mean, I get. Actually, like you guys are tell you guys are being nice, but you're like, yeah, he's, he's we'll let him on to do bingo. We're just like, okay, so uh, Mark, your thing here. No, we did uh, we did bingo in Europe last fall, and it was really fun. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it, it's just a way for us to interact where it's not so just, hi, I'm Heidi. What's your name? It's a special way for us to be able to play a game together, interact. And it just gives our fan base a little bit of a different, you know, look into our personalities and our lives. And it's really fun for us. It is. And it pays for our bus. So, <laughs> so it helps a lot. Sounds sounds like a good deal to me. Pays for the bus. Jeez, oh, I can't wait to get on a bus again, guys. You guys still toured with that whole time that you were you were off. I'm I'm about to get on my first bus in five years. I'm like, oh wow, yeah, yeah. We we did a few tours, and it was uh, definitely um, strange getting back on the bus the first time, but we settled in pretty nicely. Yeah. And uh, Heidi and I always sleep across from each other. Her bunk oh. is um, on the right side. Mine's on the left. No, wait. Yeah. It's been a while. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it's so we always, and we giggle and we listen for, you know, the boys doing whatever they do in their bunk and we open the curtains and laugh. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta go across the hall, Thelma and Louise style. Just holding hands the, the whole ride. Oh yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've done that. We almost did have a Thelma and Louise moment in our bus. We were on this terrible tour bus. It was actually motley Cruz tour bus from the home sweet home era that's how Whoa. decrepit the bus was so we were this yeah. bus was down constantly but one time so me and heidi had the whole back lounge there was two little beds back there so we smelled it's like smoke. our first time we ever got to like have a rolling like a a you know a back lounge bed i know a lot of buses have that but we've We've never done that. So we mm. actually had our back lounge beds. It was fun. Yeah. There's so two then, of them back there. Yeah. Fire back there. So that wasn't so fun. Yeah. Yeah. So you, got, wait, you, you were fire. saying, Carla, you were saying you, were, you started to smell smoke. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was it was getting smoky. We had to wake everybody up and get off the bus. So the bus like almost blew up on the side of the road. And I think it was we were going home. So <laughs> we, were, we were almost home. That's a little ironic. With the yeah, home was, sweet home era yeah. <laughs> era bus blowing up on was, the side of the yeah. road, it was, it was poetry in motion. <laughs> it was crazy. That's wild. Well, you know, I hope you guys have a great summer out and stuff like that. It's been an absolute. Do you have something else? You 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 look like you have something to say here, Sam. Did you have something you wanted to ask about? Oh, I, I just had one more question, just about the double album, because I heard on another podcast, uh, Heidi, you guys were both talking, but it seems like you both have a love for lots of different music. Johnny and I, you know, he gets thrown all the metal stuff, but behind closed doors, he listens to metal is not his go to, you know, it's more yeah. pop and uh, punk. It and used to like be, that. but, you know, my emotions changed over over the years and I, I listen to a lot of a little bit of everything these days. Well, yeah, that's it. A little bit of everything. And, and Heidi had mentioned how her mom <laughs> took a bunch of, uh, you know, it, the corn one. Everyone talks that you've mentioned a lot of times. But then you started mentioning some uh, some great 90s hip hop and R&B. And you guys both had kind of talked about that. So are you guys going to incorporate a little bit more of that stuff in the double? Is it going to be one is one feeling and another is another? Or what, how are you guys mixing it's that up? Definitely two distinct feelings, but no 90s hip hop. No biggie, you know, on there. Well, um, you, you got best friends, which got us covered. So we're, we're close yeah, enough. Yeah, we covered best friend, which is, which was, we, yeah. we really 
we really figured that we were kind of the only ones who could really do that. <laughs> like, great job. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys are best friends in the video and the, the video is fun and everything too. Again, I love that you brought up your uh, production company and the family again, Heidi. Uh, we, we had a lot. That's when I discovered that you were, had a, had a part in Sandlot. Uh, if you remember, yes. correctly, we were talking about that. That was, yeah. that was awesome. Um, yeah. My old life. <laughs> <laughs> Super well, cool we, though. There is a, there's a nod to, there's a song on there called Spit and Teeth, which is almost like our sound guy falling out of the bus. Um, but, but, um, there, there's a nod to, uh, an early 2000s hip hop song in, in Very that song. I mean, oh my nod. God. We have an R. Kelly reference too. So I guess there is the dude. You're allowed to a- do R. Kelly references? It's in Beaver Cage. <laughs> yeah, it's the bridge. So I didn't the bridge catch it. Goes, if you get your shots, then you'll go with Rob. Come back to America and piss off all the moms. So that is it because you talk actual... about pissing and Aaron Kelly? Is that why? It's no. no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but who is Rob though? Wait, who is Rob? Who are you taking R. shots Kelly. with? R. Kelly. Oh, his uh, name's Rob. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You learn so, something new every day at Drinks with right? Johnny. Um, there's a so super there's, there's, video of him performing in Ethiopia and he's on stage and he's like, do you have your passport? Do you have your shots? Would you like to come back to America with me? It's crazy. It's wild. I and remember so that. All that. And um, it's, we're like, if you get your shots, it's so, yeah, that's the inspiration there. I love that. I love that. By the way, I didn't catch that. So I'm, I'm so glad I learned that today. Um, and which just on a side, like we, I love the R. Kelly's music. Like, like some of the stuff like that he's put out, like the, um, what was the name of the album that had like Snoo- it had like every cameo on it. It came out in like 2007. We were working on our self-titled record and I had my Dodge Charger, which I thought was so fucking cool at the time because it had a, like a really rad bass sound on it and like the sound system was really cool. Anyways, I was listening to uh, Double Up all the time on R. Kelly's album up there and we just bust it the whole time and then it always sucks and you have to learn about someone's like real life and they're just kind of shitty people and you're like, damn it, man, why'd you have to do that? Like, I really liked your music. You ruined, I believe I can fly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you ruined it. No, it's, um, you know, for us, and one thing that I like, I love, love, love about this band is we're so open to all sorts of different music for inspiration. And it's been there's a lot of country influence in a lot of stuff that we've been doing. Um, I love Hardy. I've been really on a country mm-hmm. kick for a while now. And um, Lainey Wilson is one of my favorite artists out, out right now. Jelly Roll. There's so many amazing country Jelly artists. Roll's blowing up, and man. Yeah. And it's also kind of doing this with rock it's kind of yeah. blending together and and i love to see these genres blend i think as an artist if you kind of still you, you don't look at other genres as inspiration you're robbing yourself of really amazing talent and really mm-hmm. amazing work and i have found so much inspiration in it um there's a nod to ella fitzgerald on our mm-hmm. album as well so you know can we take it back bring it forward take it back um there's a lot of different stuff on it so i am very excited for everyone to hear this new evolution of yeah. butcher babies it kind of runs the gamut of everything that we've ever released the melodic the poppy stuff the dark the sad the painful and um i'm i'm, I'm just i'm i'm so proud of this body of work that we've spent the last 1920 five years <laughs> the last many years putting together yeah so it's, it's exciting i'm excited to hear it you're you're getting me all jazzed up now just listening to that no no, no uh pun we'll intended on the Ella, on the fitzgerald there but oh yeah please do um i'll i'll, I'll send you guys mine too but i mean it'll 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 be out by the time you know it's coming out this week so uh, oh yeah by the time this episode goes friday yeah it's coming out friday yeah pretty exciting congratulations stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, Sam, what was, so you, you did all this research and found out that they love nineties hip hop yet. You didn't come up with a nineties hip hop trivia f- game for me to get mad so, at you about. 
Well, it's just so so you ladies know, uh, I like to do games and now I'm kicking myself that I didn't do it before. But Johnny's been kicking the shit out of me every time I do it for not agreeing with the answers of the games. I'm going to yeah. ask him. I'm going to ask him the question. All right. No. OK. Th those can are there bad be, examples. Can there be can there be any horror movie list, any kind of horror movie list that doesn't include Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th or Halloween? All three are not in the top ten of one of his uh, on both of his top top ten list of grossing movies. franchises or movies. Those are yeah, not top ten for any of the why, why you wouldn't consider those like great horror movies, but you know because it is it. There's the first ones, and then it becomes chain, and it waters it down, and it becomes silly. But uh, I get it. No, you guys are welcome back. Wait, did you say it wouldn't You're be in so your top nice. ten either, Heidi? <laughs> Wait a second. I, I'm those not letting not the slide on that. Those are not in my. Those are not in my top ten either. What? Come on! You said one of you said, mentioned it follows. Which one of you said I, it? I love it. It follows. I love it. So John mean. gave me shit about that one. That movie so was mean. so lame. You knew it's, what? It's, I understand. It's supposed to be a crazy STD chasing these teenagers around. It's not it's that crazy. Come on. But it's different than normal. That's why I thought it was good. We've seen the same. Different shit. isn't so always good. Time. Different isn't always good. All right. You guys if you like horror, I am in the middle of binging a TV show on Amazon Prime called From, F R O M. Okay. It is. Oh, I saw that. I want to saw that advertised. I want to see it. It is so unique and so weird. It's not your typical. There's not. It's not a slasher film. It's not a monster film or a vampire it, or series. I guess it is so unique and so cool. Um, when it comes to horror, I, I do take that pretty seriously around here, but, uh, I'm more inspired by like an evil dead, for instance, the, Ooh, not did you see the new one? one? I did. I did. And it was very campy and I, I loved it, but not as much as the 2013 edition. The 2013 edition is my favorite of the whole entire franchise. I really? thought, it, I thought that one was so well done. Army of Darkness so is the best one of the franchise. It's, it's not even debatable. Army I got to rewatch is... that old one though. Okay. I, I agree though, on that. <laughs> it's, but, but, so, so, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing that we're more of the same age than you and Heidi are then. Uh, I don't know. I know I'm actually the exact same age as Heidi. I'm 38. Oh, are you? So I sort of like the older, the older stuff because I'm older. I'm forty. So I'm an old lady. Oh no, you're not. I did. I thought you guys were the same age. I didn't know. No. I, I don't know. I I, I won't ask. The, I'm not going to ask a lady Probably that question. Probably like six months older than me. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you it's go. perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That's six months. I I grew. we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and you both look great. You both did look you, great. Whatever. Did you age guys? It is. Like the end, so I finally got around to Scream Six, and I liked it. I liked how they redid the rules. Johnny, were you and I the one talking about this yesterday? Uh, and yeah. I don't like the way it ended, though. Did you guys see that one? I was with my stepkid, and I was like, "Oh God, I can't! I, 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 this is terrible." So I gave up on it. Didn't make it to the end. Which yeah. one's well, the you, sixth you, one? Is that the one that was just in theaters like six months ago? Yeah, they take it to the city. They kind of reveal the like killer it. in the beginning, which is cool. But then they reveal uh, other killers at the end. And you're like, oh, God, this is why it's like number six and not two. Yeah, but um, were you entertained at the end of the day? This was. is the problem I have when people go like, oh, it's not as. If you went into that movie thinking it was going to be as good as the first couple screams, that's on you. It's the well, sixth sure. scream, people. <laughs> yes. It's like saying like the new Fast and Furious is up there with Tokyo Drift. Like it is not. I'm it's not, kidding. and it's not gonna be. Tokyo Drift in there. <laughs> oh, I was going with that, Heidi. You were joking. I was like, yeah, absolutely. No, like by the time you get to that, are you entertained still? Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I'm going there see, for. I just want to see slashers and fast cars. Like that's like uh, can I get a double header of Scream Six and. Fast and Furious 800. Like, let's do it. Fuck <laughs> yeah, and put and put everyone back in it. I need The Rock back in it. I need I need I need everybody in that movie. And put Nick Cage oh. in it just for fun. But oh. you got to put Nick Cage in a movie just. I for love fun. Nick Cage late so much. And then, did you guys see the new Vampire one? Yeah, right. No, he, he did. We were it. talking about that yesterday. I want to go see it. I, I still haven't watched it. I guess you can watch it at home now. It. It's my favorite like movie that I've watched in in, in a while. Especially oh, I'm so before. excited to see this. So good. I loved it. Oh, he, I love he I love the last one he did too with the guy from uh, 
uh, he was in Game Pass of Thrones and, and uh, The Mandalorian. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Pablo something. Pe- Pedro oh, yeah. Pasco. Pasco. Pa- yeah, yeah, yeah. Pedro he- Pascal. <laughs> yeah. He's an incredible actor. And he does so good yeah. in that movie, too, with Nick Cage. Did you guys see that with Nick Cage movie, too? Unbearable Weight. Oh, yeah. you've got to see that one. Oh, yeah. The Unbearable Weight. Yes. He plays the one himself. where he plays himself. Yes. It's yes. so good. It's so yeah. good. When they when they yeah. get on drugs together, it's like I was so happy for that movie yeah. to be able to witness. We that. actually we watched Mandy and um, the one he's in. It's a very psychedelic uh, movie, and that is a huge inspiration for the very last song on our album. Oh, the very oh, last look at song, that. and the very last song and the very last lyric <laughs> of that song are what the albums are named after. So we have Eye for an Eye Till the World's Blind. And that was inspired by Nicolas Cage. So here we are, full circle. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that. I love how that happens sometimes here on the show. That was great. I appreciate that, guys. I really do. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go now. I know you got some other stuff to do, get ready for the tour and all that stuff and finish up that music video you've been working on. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to hear the new stuff. Um, just really appreciate your time and have fun out there. Hopefully we cross paths. I'll get your number, Carla from Heidi, and uh, I'll get you guys that, uh, that, that book. I only listen to books at this point. I, I found out that I'm not a very good reader. Uh, I have to read the same sentence or paragraph about four or five times before it actually sinks into my brain. But if I listen to it, it's all good. Well, my book and I'm actually reading it for the audio book. So you need to check it out. It's called death and other dances. So if you like audio books, you can get it. What Before is this you go, again? What, Sorry, can you talk a little again? bit more about it? Yeah. I have a, a book called Death of Their Dances, and I actually am reading it for the audiobook version. Oh, that's awesome. Did um, the audiobook didn't already come out of that? No, it's it's been out for a while. Oh, What's the audio? I was saying yeah. to go check it. it out. Yeah, okay. I, I like absolutely audiobook. will. Yeah, I Carly, like you audiobook. should send it. It's really, it's really good. Um, I'm honored. I'm a character in it. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> Yes. So, so wait, what kind of book is it? I'm sorry. What uh, we should, I, Sam, we should have done some research on, on Carla. Well, I, I was on my list to talk about actually, but uh, yeah, we got too much <laughs> other good, good stuff in. It's a book I wrote. Um, I think it came out in 2013 and it's just, it was about kind of my, my journey from um, growing up biracial Detroit and from a broken home into becoming a mortician and how mortuary school changed my life. And it's a, it's a, it gets great reviews on Amazon. So that's, is it autobiographical a, or is it, is yeah, it all you or is it fictional version? True. So when, when I was putting it out, I put that it was creative nonfiction because I didn't want to scare my parents. And then now they, they know it's all true. Um, mm. And uh, it's, it doesn't matter anymore. But at the time I was like, do I really want to say that? Do I really want to admit to that? So I thought creative nonfiction was the smart thing to put, but it's all, it's all real. <laughs> Is that pretty oh, therapeutic that. to do once you get it out there? Is it scary at first? How does that work? I mean, anytime that you can put your 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 life on paper, whether we're writing a song um, or writing a book, it's, it's so um, cathartic to do. And I found that the chapters that were hardest for me to write were the ones I needed to write the most mm-hmm. and were the most powerful. And they're also the chapters that most people write me about and want to you know, more about. So... Well, I look forward to hearing more of your voice when I when I go uh, on Audible after this and 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 go yeah. for a walk and listen start listening to this book. Uh, again, the album's coming out. What was that? July seventeenth? Did I get that right? Seven. Seven. I was close. I was close. You gotta yeah. give me credit on that. Fun fact: It's in exactly ten years, the exact same weekend as our debut album in two thousand thirteen. Oh, yeah, I didn't that's know right. That. Sam Sam said that. Sam said that. Look, he did he did do some good research. He did all that. the info. And Sam shout out knows. to Kelly. Shout out to Kelly for her help. I'm glad with your transition you stuck with her. She's she seems like a good lady she's for awesome. PR. We love yeah. we love Kelly. She's yeah. worked with her for years. She's amazing. Awesome. Well, thanks again, guys. Thanks for the time. And good luck on the tour. We'll stay in touch. Um you all that it. all that wonderful stuff. And uh yeah, hopefully we'll yeah. Hopefully I see you next week, Heidi. Carla, yeah. hopefully down down the down the yeah. line on the road or something. Say hi to Charlie. I know he's busy out there doing his little Pantera thing, which is awesome, by the way. Congrats to Charlie <laughs> and, and everybody for that. That's that's it's, really cool to play paying tribute. I mean, this is a little band. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, it was it, no, we they were they were at the Rockville, and I missed it because it was the day that we, we were on different dates. Uh, uh, they were on Saturday, we were on Friday, and I was like, if you get a chance, I'm you got to check it out. It's, Aftershock. It's, They're it's open. An incredible, the- incredible trivia. It's beautiful. When are they on Aftershock? They're they're the same. They're, they're playing the same night as you, the same day as you in Aftershock. They switched turnstile. It looks like. Oh, right on. Well, there you have it. There, yeah. that, that's where I'll be. I, hopefully, you come out, Carla, and we can say hi too. And then uh, yeah, I think I'm so. Right on, right on. All right, again, thank you guys. Everyone, go check out the new album, Everything But Your Babies. Uh, I still believe it was Heidi that farted in her video, um, but well. <laughs> <laughs> It was the dog. All right, all right. Yeah. Blame it on the dog. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, bye. cheers. Thank you. Yes, cheers. <laughs> Have a good day. You Thanks, too. Guys. You too. Bye, guys. Appreciate your time. Well, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Good group. I mean, I think they're, I mean, talk about their VIP. It sounds like they do fun stuff. They're fun group. I, I like that they, they take their art seriously, but they don't take themselves too seriously. You know what I mean? They're just there for a good time and, and very seem, uh, happy to be where they're at and share the love to their fans and all that stuff. So that that's gotta be good. Yeah, good man. Show. Yeah. Well, wife and kid just got home from, uh, from school and I can hear them making a bunch of noise down there. So it's picking up on the microphone. Anyway, I had a great time seeing you yesterday. Just re- really quick. Want to shout out to uh, our boy Darby once again. Uh, what an incredible match they had this weekend at double oh, or nothing. Okay. I so mean, good. it was, I talked to him last night, actually, after, after you left, I was texting with them and then he gave me a call and we were going through the whole match together and I was just telling him like how, how happy I was for him. And, you know, when, you know, main eventing the event or main eventing for the first time on the pay-per-view going head to head and, and putting on a show like the, the moment, excuse me, the moment was definitely not too big for those guys that in the, in the, in the four-way match, like they were ready for it. Congrats to Sammy Guevara and, and Ty Mello. Uh, uh, I guess they're having, they're having a baby now. And if anyone's listening to this now and is a wrestling fan and didn't, or even if you're not a wrestling fan, you got to go get the AEW pay-per-view. Uh, um, I think you get on, I got it on Bleacher Report. I think, I'm sure there's a couple other places you could get it too and rewatch it. If not for anything but, you know, this main match was, I was telling you, uh, Sam, yesterday, and you could contest to this, uh, it was a match for the ages. I really think it'll it'll go down as a Hall of Fame match. It's a big moment for AEW. Those homegrown talent, uh, you know, just showing this is us. This is what we do, and and we're we're fucking really good at it. And it was it was really fun. Oh, the art and the the secret synchronization that all of them have together in the art that they do because that's really what it is. I mean, it's quite a show and definitely worth watching with like like you said whether you're into wrestling or not you can't deny the things they're doing and and the moves and just the storytelling in the ring itself yeah. is pretty amazing so absolutely cheers to those guys yeah sure. kudos to those guys and uh yeah everyone uh enjoy whatever day it is that you're listening to this and uh we'll see you next time as always sam cheers cheers